All right, um, we're here with WXPN's weekday man from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., Mike Vasilikos. Mike, thank you for taking some time off to, uh, to, to join us. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I do a thing at noon called uh, the lunch hour, and basically it's a different theme every day. Um, and I sometimes it's a curated thing by me, and most of the time it's something that I'm reaching out to our community of listeners to help us curate and put together and it's we uh, ask people like what was the first album you ever bought with your own money and people the stories and the memories that people have for that uh are great but it's one of those things that i think works best when you're live there and connecting with people one-on-one -on -one, which is a big part of what we do here at xpn and i think you almost answered this next question you know with the rise of the spotify's and these personalized algorithms feeding me you know, all this music I should be listening to, you know, how does WXPN maintain its role as a tastemaker? And you said this as a curator. I, I feel really fortunate to work uh, at a place like this. We're a public radio station. You know, we say it all the time, but, you know, people rely on us to play music they're not going to hear anywhere else. And, you know, in turn, we, we rely on those people to become members and support the radio station. So it is a really like unique one-on-one -on -one relationship uh, and, and people that listen, I think really do take ownership of the fact that they're part of this music community and they're really passionate about it. Uh, but, you know, being live, you know, our hosts are there in the studio every day talking right to you and uh, reacting to things as they happen, um, which, you know, I think can get lost in, in media these days sometimes. Um, and also being, you know, hyper local, trying to be connected to what's happening you know, in, in our community and in our broadcasting area. Um, we've got a guy here, John Batiste, who does our local show. He does a, a tremendous job and I work really yeah. closely with John and we curate uh, our, our local picks, which I do in the one o'clock hour, a different song every day from a local band. And I mean, last year, I, I forget the exact number, but I think it was like 185 different Philadelphia, you know, and beyond artists from our region that we get to spotlight. And I think those are sort of the difference, the difference makers for, for us. What was your first radio experience and or what was that first moment that you're like, I, I want to go into this industry? I always wanted to be in broadcasting. I thought I'd do like play by play in sports or something like that. I was I was super right, into right. sports growing up. I, I still am. Um, but you know, I'm also a pretty practical person and realize, you know, if you want to be a play by play baseball announcer, there's there's only like 30 some odd jobs. Right. So it's probably a, ch a bigger challenge. And um, when I went to college, uh, I went to a school and my idea, I think at first was was maybe to try to get into television. Mm -hmm. And um, I realized that when I went to orientation for the TV station uh, that they said, like, most of the time, it's just seniors that get on the air. They work behind the scenes for three years. And then it's, you know, you get airtime when you're a senior. And I, I think I was a bit impatient and also was sure. like, well, what if, what if I don't? And um, then I went four years and I don't really have any on air or on camera experience. And the next day I went to a meeting for the student radio station and instead of having to wait three years to get on air, they gave me a shift that week, that weekend. And I, and I loved it. And I, I kind of never looked back. But give me like your top three or so albums that you personally feel are your favorites. Uh, those change probably day to day. Uh, Fair to enough. Be, what is it today? <laughs> to be really honest with you. No, one, one that's kind of always at the top of my list and uh, that I'll, that I'll stick with until, till the day I die is, um, Highway 61 Revisited by Bob Dylan. Um, sure. That is, I mean, it's a classic record. It's a pivotal point in music history. Um, but for me, it was a little more personal. I, I just remember not really knowing, you know, I was 14, 15, kind of just like exploring music. And m my dad, he, he, he still works like six days a week, but he, you know, he'd work and he'd come home like six o'clock, seven o'clock. And I remember one day from, uh, I came home from schools probably about like 3.30. I might have been in like sixth or seventh grade, something like that. Mm -hmm. And there was a stack of records and a bag. It's a Tower Records. And I was like, whoa. It's like dad's home yeah. early today. And he was like, he had a stack of Dylan records and some other stuff. And uh, I, was, I asked him about it. And he said, well, after dinner, we'll listen to some of them. And I just remember hearing Highway 61. And it was like my brain exploded. 
and i was like yeah. i need to i need to like um just uh listen to as much bob dylan as possible and then you start realizing that songs that you know and love by other artists he he wrote he wrote <laughs> yeah. recorded. um so that was a big one for me and you know probably the other one uh again sort of just a big big one you know sergeant peppers was huge for me growing up um sure. the, everybody's got the, the beatles record and i don't even know if it's their best record but that was the one it was just like you know a kaleidoscope in my mind it was it's still just so cool well, it's, that's like, it's a legendary it's got like a, a mythos to it i mean most a lot of their stuff does but that yeah. one in particular uh, it's great. It's, give me a band that you're really into right now might not be a band you're into a year from now but but one that you think other people should hear more of i just discovered this band called uh, i believe it's uh uh, Leveda, either Leveda or Levita. Um, it's okay. L-O-V-E-D-A. They're uh, a duo from New York. They're kind of like indie, dream, pop, shoegaze. If you like things like Slow Dive or, um, you know, maybe even like, oh, the Sundays are a very good reference for this band. Now, I I'm not a big compare compare person, but okay. if you like the Sundays from the 90s. Yes. The, the British band, the Sundays? Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Dream pop, shoegazy type of thing. Wait, who are they again? Levita? Yeah. L A V E D A. Right -E they released their first record right before the pandemic, and I feel like a lot of bands got a little lost. You know, where it's like they put right. out music and then the world stopped. So and you couldn't like tour and support it. And it, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but they're super cool, and I've I've been listening to that a a, a lot recently. Um. What are some of the biggest trends or shifts that you might see happening now in music, in the music industry? Well, I think the biggest thing that I've noticed um, that's kind of like, how do we, how do we, how do we kind of work with this? It's changed a little bit is how bands release music and mm -hmm. what it, on our side, on the radio side, what it means for us. You know, we used to be very much in this rhythm of like, band announces album and single and here's the single and that's what you have and then you kind of lead up to the album release and then the band goes on tour and it was like this system that kind of works and we all were kind of in that groove and as the digital age has moved in and the streaming age i should say it feels like it's it's way less about like people going out and buying a record obviously but it's more about consumption and these bands kind of like leaving breadcrumbs to the album coming out and as a fan it's really cool because like maybe you hear like three or four songs from a record before it comes out as a radio person it's like oh i want to share all this new music with people but it's all it's way more than it was instead of like one song from a band before the record came out maybe now there's like three or four songs and even when we get into our music meetings, we get this, well, I really like this one and I like that one. And the label is like, no, don't play that one because that's not the song we want. And it's like, right. wow, it's just, it's a lot. Is there anything that you guys, WXPN is plugging currently or anything that you want uh, uh, people to know more about? We've got our festival that's happening in September. We're all really, really psyched about that. Um, I know Kristen was on the show not too mm -hmm. long ago and uh, and talked about that. But September 22nd, 23rd, 24th, come on. To, it is such a great time. Um, I've been to a lot of music festivals. I've been to a lot of concerts. There is something different about what we do. Uh, the community coming together. These are people that are just like true music lovers. The artists love being there. They interact. They hang out. It's a lot of fun, uh, and and we've got a great lineup this year with Old Crow Medicine Show and Margot Price, Low Cut Connie. It's it's going to be a great time. Um, but something that's really kind of near and dear to me is I've gotten involved with uh, our musicians on call program at XPN, and especially after COVID, um, we're really excited because this program is kind of like getting back on its feet. And basically, what musicians on call is is volunteer musicians who go into nearby hospitals and they play at the bedsides of patients and their families and their caregivers and it is an it is incredibly impactful uh for those that are um uh that are obviously in the situations that they're in mm -hmm. 
uh, and for the artists as, as well. There have been so many artists uh, from our community that have kind of gone in and it's been uh, almost like a life-changing experience for them to play for people and to kind of get at really the root of why they started playing music. And that's to sort of like elevate people uh, feelings and emotions and stuff. So, um, I've gotten involved with that program. We have a, a big fundraiser coming up on October 15th. It's a 5k run, one mile walk. It's at Penn park. All the proceeds go to the uh, musicians on call program. Uh, and, um, it's the 10th year that we're doing the, the 5k and the walk. Um, and you know, last year we were back in person, uh, for the first time in a couple of years. Uh, and the, turnout was tremendous tremendous and we're hoping um to do the same this year uh and if if uh you're not a runner like i said there's the walk and if you can't make it that day we're going to keep the virtual option that we started during the pandemic available because we have a lot of people that listen outside the philadelphia area that want to take sure. part in this program and and you can you can do the the walk or run from anywhere and can we get all that information on WXPN's website? Yeah, just go to xpn.org. There's a button that says tell me more, and you can get all, all the details there. Excellent. Mike, I appreciate your time. After your shift, I want you to get to checking your emails. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for I, – I really, I'm, I'm really interested to check out that band. Shoegaze is like one of my niche you know, genres that I listen to a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm looking forward to checking them out. I'm going to throw uh, one more yeah. band at you because uh, we love them at XPN. And um, I can't believe I, I forgot saying them, but there's this band called Wednesday, which is, okay. actually, the day, which is actually the day that we're recording this. Um, they're from North Carolina. Uh, they are going to be playing our festival, but they just put out an amazing uh, record. They just had a sold out show in Philly. Um, uh, it's kind of like a little bit of everything uh but very very cool band and I, i've been listening to that a lot recently too oh i'm gonna give you one and you didn't ask me hit me no I'm, I, yeah uh, have you heard teenage wrist no i'm and writing it down teenage wrist is kind of post shoegaze um we some post grunge in there too really good new stuff and, and it's fun like i i started buying more vinyls listening to bands now than I even, you know, thought about in the past. I'm, it's so fun now to hold, I don't know, just to connect with some of these bands that I, I didn't, aren't making national headlines, but you can still, you know, support them now through the internet and, and through, of course, radio stations like WXPN. Yeah, totally. I know. I took, I took my kids to record store day for the first time and it was, it was awesome. And I hope, I hope that's, I hope that's one of the moments right. they remember in their lives when I love it too. Cause they look at a record. They're like, how, how does this play the music? You know? And it's yeah. just, just the whole thing. Even like you just said, you're talking uh, that memory of your dad, you know, that's something that stays with you. It does. And I think yeah. it's really cool. So yeah. All right, Mike, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And uh, for all the information, again, you want to hit up xpn.org. You can find more information about the, the program that Mike was talking about, um, the Exponential Festival coming up in September, all that fun stuff. And uh, thank you, guys. Appreciate hey, it. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it.